Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Armand Lemon and welcome back to Simple Planes. Today we're going to be having a look at a few flying boats recreated in this game. Uh, flying boats, um, they are around for a while. Um, you don't really see any of them these days apart from museums. Uh, for several reasons why the designs didn't really uh, have much in terms of longevity. But while they were around, um, I, th I think the designs that they came out with for these these things they look so they're absolutely beautiful machines so elegant and graceful because well you know they're flying boats what now what, quickly what's the difference between a flying boat and a seaplane it's simple a seaplane has been quickly well not quickly but it's not specifically designed for use on board it's not specifically amphibious you know a seaplane could be any aircraft where you've where you've removed part of the landing gear and replace it with floats. A flying boat is specifically built to land on water and has its fuselage modified to look like that of a ship's hull so it can land on water. So that's quickly the difference. Anyway let's crack on with some flying boat designs in simple planes. Alright so the first vehicle we have is the Beriev BE-12 or known in Russia as the Chaika. Its NATO reporting name was Mail. So this is a large Russian flying boat. It was a development from the Beriev BE-6, which was a heavy uh, flying boat that was absolutely covered in uh, heavy 23mm uh, cannons. This one didn't have any cannons, but it did carry a lot of ordnance, up to one and a half tons of ordnance. And this wonderful uh, model in simple planes was made by Simple Flow, who makes a lot of fantastic aircraft. So let's see how it goes. So. There's a lot of power in the engines, let's just level it out and it's got a nice long takeoff, I like that. I don't like these I don't like aircraft that have ridiculously short takeoffs. There we go, and we're up. Uh it's shaking around a bit. And it does have those large missiles in the wing, because those were the uh those that's with that's where the uh aircraft's armaments were stored the bombs or large missiles. Um, can I fire them? No, oh, I've dropped. Oh, <laughs> I've dropped some. Oh, that was a torpedo. Okay, I've dropped a torpedo. Um, I should have read the instructions before doing this. Uh, I've dropped the torpedo when I press one, two. Oh, I've dropped. <laughs> another, I've dropped another torpedo on land. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, three. Another. No, no torpedoes on three, four. Five. Okay. Right. Uh. Oh, that's, oh there's t there's two there's two infernos. I I don't know how to fire those. Nope. Um. Okay. So I know how some of the uh, weapons work. So I'm going to restart and fire the torpedoes. I'm not sure if the torpedoes are real uh, usable torpedoes. I know I have played with some uh, aircraft before like the fairy swordfish that had an actual like sort of working torpedo that would float and you could look, watch the camera on it as well which was that was a lot of fun to use that. So let's see how, what the torpedoes do on this and Let's, let's play with this a little bit. Okay, so let's go low to the water. And yes, this was a flying boat, but it did have retractable gears. Obviously, it didn't come out of the aircraft like that exactly, but that's the uh, the best we've got to work with in simple planes. So it did have it did have retractable landing gear in real life, so that's cool. That's been recreated in this model. So if we press 1, we drop the torpedo and... it... Oh! Fl <laughs> <laughs> that torpedo was, was, was catching up with us! That is brilliant! I like that. I like that a lot. And... I think I should have made the torpedo point at something. So let's go... Let's go over here. If the torpedo is pointing at something, does it does it detonate? And I've I've lost control of the plane now. Just a little bit. 
Oh boy. Have we got have we got control of the plane again? Yep, we've got control of the plane again. Kind of Oh, that's that's a hard landing. Anyway, um apart from my inability to fly anything properly, that was a BE twelve and that's a wonderful model, so thank you very much, simple flow. Next up, we've got the Saunders Row SRA1, uh, which seems a bit redundant because obviously the SR in SRA1 stands for Saunders Row. So we're just going to call it the Saunders Row A1, which was a prototype um, seaplane, no, float, prototype flying boat fighter aircraft developed in the UK uh, in the late 1940s, early 1950s. This model made by Gemister or Gemister, however, however you want to pronounce it. Anyway, um, three prototypes were made, and I couldn't find much in the terms of in much of in terms of data from testing the aircraft. But um, anyway, it was a a flying boat fighter, which carried four 20 millimeter Hespani Mark V, so the you know the sort of typical armament for British fighters at the time. And we're going to see how this aircraft handles in game. So we're going to apply thrust now. Not sure what's going on with the uh, controls of this vehicle. I'm trying to get ah, try to get airborne. Okay, we've got the landing gear in, but it doesn't want to doesn't want to take off. Until we give it. Okay, we're giving it more beans, and we're airborne. That's good. Um, Okay, I'm not doing any of this. No oh boy. Nope. 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 No. 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 Okay. So this hasn't this hasn't gone well. Uh, give me a second. Right. So what I found instead uh, is a, a fictional, well, partially fictional aircraft called the SRA3, made by Mikoyanster, which obviously takes its design cues from the SRA1 and looks to me like it could be like a continuation of the development of the aircraft which obviously stopped after three prototypes. So let's see how this one flies. It's still got the four guns on the front, similar armament. And apparently the problem they had with this with this aircraft in real life, the SRA-1, was a problem which was pretty much met with any attempt to build a seaplane. No, nope, not seaplane. A flying boat fighter aircraft which is, as you can see, the air intake on the front of the aircraft was very low to the water and a lot of water getting into the air intake for a jet engine was bad. Uh, so that was a problem they had to overcome by having the air intake higher up on the nose of the plane which caused more problems as it restricted the view of the pilot as, as they need to be able to see a lot, you know, if they're a fighter aircraft uh, and by having the nose of the aircraft quite sort of high up was obviously um, a hindrance. So that's why you don't see any flying boat fighter aircraft. So, this aircraft, the SRA-3, this handles like an absolute dream. Um, not exactly what the problem was. Not sure exactly what the problem was with Gamista's SRA1 model, but this SRA3, this is this is wonderful. This this handles an absolute dream. So I will put a link to both aircraft down in the description. And this makes the first uh, aircraft, the first fictional aircraft I've had on one of these uh, on one of these reviews, uh, these uh, simple planes review videos. Well, I guess you could count all the um, Nazi wonder planes I had. They were mostly fictional in terms of they didn't exist beyond uh, scribbling on a napkin, probably. Anyway, the Saunders SR-1 and SRA-3, flying boat fighter aircraft. Okay, while we're talking about uh, partially fictional planes, this is the TUBE-124, uh, which is a fictional cross between a Tupolev 124 airliner and a Beriev flying boat like we saw earlier and this thing looks incredibly majestic and it's absolutely huge so we're gonna have a look at how it goes now if I remember correctly I have to press 4 and 5 to activate both engines otherwise it's just gonna uh, 
only activate one engine and that'll be no good. So, give it a bit more power. It does sound great, I do like the sound of the jet engines in this game. So we've taken off conventionally. And then we can retract the landing gear. And it's great, doesn't it? Um, if we swing it round, we're going to land it down there in that water. So let's reduce power and just bring it in nice and slow. And not entirely sure why my frame rate has dropped. I think it's because of the size of the aircraft. I apologise for that. Messenger bleeps. I right, have to slow down a lot, I think, to bring it in. See how it's got a small, it's got small jet engines to actually, uh, in place of the um, vertical stabilizer. Uh, we're coming in a little bit hard, but other than that, this uh, TUB, I've actually forgotten to write down the name of who created it, but obviously I will put it in the video description. But he said it's a it's a fictional mail carrying aircraft, so uh, yeah, you could definitely see that. But in terms of flying boats go, this would be if it actually existed. This will be literally one of the largest flying boats ever created. You know, on a par with the um, that massive thing is it called like the Hercules or something that Howard Hughes made that ended up being one of the largest aircraft ever made. And uh, never mind the largest flying boat, but it did fly. Anyway, we're um might well put the uh I'll put the landing gear down because we've accidentally beached. <laughs> we've accidentally come up onto the beach here. Um I'll 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 end this section of the video with a bit of fun and try to take off f on the beach. Come on. Come on. What is what is my frame rate doing? I have no idea. We can make it. Okay, we can't make it. We've lost the wing. So both engines though. Um, yeah, TUB124 uh, fix, uh, fictional flying boat hybrid aircraft. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a little step back in time now to the First World War and this is the 1917 Felix Stowe F2A flying boat. The in-game model brought to us by Fred Dean. Now this is obviously a British uh, World War One flying boat that served with the Royal Naval Air Service and later after the war the RAF after the you know the RAF uh, started to exist because that's not what it was called uh, during the war it was known as the Royal Flying Corps I think probably anyway it was powered by two Rolls-Royce Eagle V12 engines and carried a variety of guns and other armaments that left it a very versatile and multi-purpose vehicle as it could engage aircraft and it was known to engage zeppelins and other fighter aircraft as well as an anti-submarine vehicle. So let's see how it does in game and what I really love about this are the little uh, the little dudes in the gun mounts front and rear and they've got their uh, their scarves flying around which does identify them as uh, British uh, British air crews. Shame we can't see their moustaches, which they do also undoubtedly have. And they'd probably be smoking pipes as well. Anyway. Because of the buoyancy of the vehicle, the buoyancy parts in the bottom of the fuselage, it does tend to lean to one side. So you don't get the full effect of these pontoons at either end. Obviously it's the World War One aircraft, so it does look very old, very archaic, but in simple planes it handles absolutely wonderfully, taking off in a very short time. And thanks to those two Rolls-Royce Eagle engines, it was a very f powerful aircraft. And so it entered service in 1917 and it did serve to as late as, oh what we're doing here, doing some <laughs> doing some tricks and stunts and what have you, things this was absolutely not made to do. Anyway, so yeah, it entered service in 1917 and did serve until 1925. Well, the the, uh, the Felix Stowe model did anyway. I'm gonna stop pratting around with this now and try just to do some sensible level flights. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> let's just uh, let's just restart it and stop faffing around with it. 
Anyway, so yeah, it did serve until uh, 1970, no, 1925, 1975, that'd be a long service life, wouldn't it? 1925, where it was replaced by the Supermarine, Supermarine Southampton, pretty sure it was, uh, who also went on to make the um, the well-known Supermarine, Supermarine Walrus, which was a well-known uh, search and rescue um, flying boat that was carried by a lot of Royal Naval ships. Which had obviously a, a similar uh, setup to this, and that was used as late as the Second World War. Um, so having a bit of trouble taking off right now. I'm not sure why. And oh, you can turn the little guns around as well. That's cool. Fire the guns. I don't know why it doesn't want to take off. Really, um, it took off easily earlier. Now it just wants to. Now it just wants to mess around. I think if I have to level it out, level it out, then try and take off. Come on, come on! Yay, we've taken off. That's good. Right, finally. So yeah, this is the Felix Stowe F2A by Fred Dean. And that's absolutely wonderful, fantastic-looking flying boat model. Okay, so the penultimate model I'm going to bring to you in this video is the Canadair or Bombardier CL415 or B415, depending on who was, uh, depending on the designation. But this was a purpose-built firefighting water bomber. So it's a flying boat. It lands in water. It takes on water into these uh, onboard tanks, then flies over forest fires or other large fires, dropping water on them to put it out. So it was made specifically for this purpose and 90 were produced between 1993 and 2015 and it was a very effective aircraft at its purpose uh, you probably see them on uh, they probably they probably were seen a lot on television during most uh, major forest fires particularly in Canada and the American Pacific Northwest where large forest fires uh, do occur regularly so these things would pick up uh, several hundred gallons of water and dropped them over a forest fire in what made for you know very dramatic looking scenes and you could tell it's a uh, emergency services vehicle and not a military one because of its bright colors so this is the first um, sort of well I don't have very many civilian aircraft in these videos let's just say that but as you can see it does have a uh, conventional landing gear so it can land on ordinary runways and I'm going to try to do that now without making a complete prat of myself so best of luck oh I do like the landing gear on these are great uh, this is made by the Alban by the way uh, be a link in the description he's made an absolutely wonderful looking aircraft and I really like how those uh, the landing gear folds down so oh we're going we're going stall mode here very short takeoff landing <laughs> <laughs> it's not how these things are supposed to land properly, but that's how we're doing it anyway. There we go. That's the most single most successful. Oh god, I've just bumped onto the runway. I'm not very good at takeoffs and landings in, in planes, I must say, but this is definitely one of the better ones. So yeah, the Canada or Bombardier CL four one five by the Alban. Absolutely fantastic model. Thank you very much. All right, to round off our flying boat special, we have this absolute oddity, which is the Savoia Marchetti. S55, which was an Italian flying boat that first flew in 1926. As you can see, it's got a double hull configuration with the engine mounted canted slightly upwards in between. So the pilots would sit here in the middle and passengers or payload would sit in these twin fuselages here. It's got a twi triple tail and it's without doubt like even picture of the thing in real life, like this this model really does do it justice. This model by A5 Mod 3 US. This thing really was an oddity, but it set records. It set flying records in the 1920s for uh, speed, height, and distance. So let's see how it goes in game. Okay, can't give it too much power just yet, because as you can see, the engines are powered by spinning jets. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting method of propulsion for <laughs> for this aircraft, but it does make it surprisingly easy to control. So we've already taken off, and that's good. The enemy aircraft has been critically damaged. Then we're in fighting them, 
Um, so yeah, first flew in the 20s. Uh, it did serve in the Second World War as a bomber and torpedo aircraft. Um, but I can't say I can't say it was particularly effective considering it's it was designed in the twenties. Like most most planes aren't that useful, especially in, in that sort of era of aircraft design of being effective twenty years after they first flew. But you know the Italians had to make do with what they had. So yeah, obviously it's very hard to find any information about um, these aircraft serving in the Second World War. But uh, the Regia Air and Autica really did, really did have to use everything they can get their hands on. Um, so yeah, this this aircraft it's not too fast in game. Uh, controls are very smooth, and it's it's generally just a very pleasant and fun, relaxing aircraft to fly. Which I think is nice for a change to to not have something that's completely out of control because it's got too much power and even the slightest change in throttle. Will send it completely out of control. So yeah, this uh, this S55 by A5 Mod 3 US. Yes, I do have to keep reading that because it is a very strange uh, handle to use in game. I'm sure he had his reasons. It does sound is that A A5 Mod 3 US? Is that the A5? Is he? He might be referring to the. He might be referring to the. Uh, I have no idea. Sounds like a re the uh, model of an aircraft. Anyway, Savoia Marchetti S55, absolutely one of my favourite flying boats now that I've discovered it, and an absolutely fantastic model in simple planes. So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and I'll catch you next time.